Hi everybody. The question I'm going to answer today is how long does opiate detox last? For those of you new to the channel, my name is Dr. B. This is Dr. B Addiction Recovery. Uh, it's all things about substance abuse on this channel. If you do like our contents, please subscribe and think about the like button. And we also have a Patreon account below where for as little as $3 a month, you can contribute to our sustained content. Uh, let's get started. The question that has been proposed to me is how long does opiate detox last? I am going to uh, change this question both because I think it's asking something else and second I want to change the framework of the question. Let me start with the second one. I want to change the framework of the question and that what I mean by that is I don't like the term detox and it's actually no longer really used by the bodies in power. Uh, detox, uh, it is now called uh, medically assisted withdrawal management or something like that. And for years I've been sort of against this term because I think it is misleading. Uh, let's think about it. What do we mean by detox? And let's just stick to opiates for simplicity. When you say I'm going to detox or I'm going to detox off of opiates, what do you really mean by that? Uh, are you saying that you want to get through the Withdrawals? Okay, so that would be withdrawals. Are you saying that once this stuff is out of your system, you're reset and sort of at a new place in your long-term recovery? Well, you are at a place, and it's good that somebody gets through those initial withdrawal symptoms, but I would say you're a long ways away from recovery. But when you use the term detox, it implies some sort of a closure and a huge hump that you've gotten over. I don't want to underestimate the difficulty of going over withdrawal sim uh, symptoms, uh, but nevertheless, uh, most folks, uh, pretty much all folks in this situation have a long ways to go. So that's how I want to change the framework of the question. In terms of what the question is asking, I do uh, believe uh, from looking at it, uh, multiple sources of it coming in, the question is really asking is, how long do withdrawal symptoms last from opiates? And now we can get into that part. In general, uh, you can say it de depends on the person, age, sex, length of use, uh, other comorbidities or medical issues that might be exacerbated by this. Uh, but in the more formal answer is it depends on what was the opiate use and the half-life. Certain opiates that might be long-acting or short-acting are going to make the withdrawal symptoms come in quicker or later. That same characteristic, for example, if you're talking about methadone, will make the withdrawal symptoms last longer or shorter. In general, we can say the acute withdrawal can last anywhere from one to two weeks. And in general, we can say they come on anywhere from one to three days. Again, these are generalizations and uh, there's particulars with each person. And we're just simply assuming opiate addiction, nothing else, the typical opiate and making generalizations that have been sort of validated by formal data. So we can say it starts one to three days afterwards, lasts one to two weeks. We can also say that in general, that opiate withdrawals are thought of as subjectively extremely difficult and painful, objectively or medically relatively safe. What do I mean by that? And it should be taken with a grain of salt. We know that benzodiazepine, alcohol, uh, uh, barbiturate withdrawals can get you very sick and potentially be life-threatening. In general, we can say that opiate withdrawals are not life-threatening and take that with a grain of salt. It depends on you and the other medical conditions you have and consult with your physician. They are also considered to be... Uh, it's funny, the literature describes it as mild flu symptoms, and I don't think anyone that's gone through heroin withdrawals would call it mild flu symptoms. But the constellation of issues we can potentially see with 
flu, and the scarlet severe flu symptoms, is sort of analogous to what you may see initially up front with opiate withdrawals, uh, runny nose, uh, maybe congestion, teary eyes, uh, severe joint and body aches, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, uh, diarrhea abdominal cramps, uh, uh, severe sweating. You could have some physiological vital sign parameter changes with the anxiety and restlessness uh, that could cause elevated heart rate, elevated blood pressure. Uh, and then there's also the insomnia and so forth. Uh, these symptoms uh, can last one to two weeks and they start to eventually get better. I'm not discussing any medication uh, or assistance we can give the person, but just, just the raw uh, withdrawal symptoms from opiates. Uh, eventually, uh, we have what is called or the acronym they often use is POS, post-acute withdrawal syndrome. And this is interesting. Uh, that term applies to any drug, uh, but the ones that really have prolonged syndromes usually are opiates, benzos, and alcohol. I myself really reserve the term POS for opiates. Uh, another term is uh, protracted withdrawal syndrome. Uh, what do we know about this uh, thing? Uh, we know it could last for weeks, months, and I argue, and even with opiates, years, depending on what your baseline genetic predisposition was to using opiates. Um, it is not as much physical as it is a constellation of psychological symptoms, and some of these can include uh, difficulty with cognitive tasks, irritability, mood changes, difficulty with sleeping, anxiety. Um, some of times they've even been described uh, obsessive compulsive behavior, uh, apathy or pessimism, which is really the same as depression. But these symptoms last uh, can last up to months. And as I argue clinically uh, from my experience, years. And there's a subtlety in there and I won't get into it or try to argue about it. Uh, more importantly, uh, I think up to six months out, they've even measured physiological changes, including things like blood pressure, heart rate, EKG changes. And this was done many, many, many years ago. The fact that there's physiological parameters associated with psychological symptoms has led others in the past, remote past, to argue that uh, those psychological, those physical parameter changes are what induce relapse and therefore these set of vague psychological symptoms aren't really the issue. The person's still going through physical withdrawals. There's a lot to say about that and it's important because even after a person gets through acute withdrawals, those protracted withdrawals over time our large reason for relapse, whether we want to call them psychological or physical. Uh, in addition to some of the stuff I described, these people also have a decreased capacity to deal with stress, and the number one cause of relapse is stress. And so that's why you often see people that say, I can do this, I've had six months clean before, I've had a year clean, and they're going about this year after year after year after year in this vicious cycle of trying to achieve this thing. Uh, and I'm referring mainly to people that refuse um, maintenance medication. But the real important point is that in that long-term withdrawal syndrome that is often referred to as PAUSE, that itself is a pretty important cause of relapse. And so even if a person gets through the acute withdrawals, those long-term issues can cause relapse. So withdrawals take on uh, the acute form and the long form. And I want to differentiate one other point here. We often discuss what are your withdrawals and what are your cravings. Especially in the initial phases, we can easily say without too much argument that, uh, you know, 
Withdrawals can cause relapse because they're intolerable. Cravings can cause relapse because it's just cravings. If you notice as time goes, what we're calling long-term or protracted withdrawals really can potentially at the same time become cravings. And the line between the two is blurred. This is a very dangerous thing to not think about three months, four months, five months, six months, eight months out. And this is where I want to reintroduce the concept, and as much as I harp on it regularly, of the importance of maintenance medication, buprenorphine products, or if someone's on methadone, <clears throat> these set of medications uh, can uh, really mitigate a lot of things uh, acutely. You know, if you get on them rapidly, you won't go through the few days of withdrawals. Uh, you'll have some discomfort. You may have some adjustment issues. Some people do, some people don't. But nevertheless, you're increasing your probability of success in the initial stage. If you get through that initial stage the first few weeks, the first couple of months, and really concentrate on your higher cognitive function and behavioral patterns and do a lot of mental health uh, housekeeping and counseling and so forth, uh, and you can make it into the long term, now you're really increasing your chances because during that long term phase, you're mitigating both withdrawals and cravings, which have sort of blended into the same thing. I hope that video helps your understanding of withdrawals and the uh, role they play in relapses. Uh, I hope it gives you a little bit on uh, uh, the importance of maintenance medication. If you do like this video, uh, click on the link above. There is a whole bunch of videos that addresses every single one of these issues. And don't forget, please click subscribe and like if you are so inclined. Have a great day. I'll see you soon.